It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I've seen you a lot on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> seen all oh, like most you. of your videos oh thank you so much for watching i really appreciate that um well you've got a big old herniated disc young lady what happened i don't know i mm. to be honest uh i don't know i just started back i want to say back in september october i started feeling like some sort of i thought what it was i thought i had an ingrown toenail because I would feel it on my little toe. I would feel like numbing. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's going to go away. You know, nothing hurted. My back didn't hurt. Nothing hurted. So then a couple days, you know, I started feeling my right leg hurting a little bit more. Going, the pain going like towards my calf, you know, my, my buttocks. And I thought, you know, I'll probably just pull the muscle or something like that. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Um. So I just went off, you know, it's going to go away. It's, I'm going to get better. Um, no, and I did. And I ended up, we ended up going to Disneyland in November and I couldn't do it. I couldn't stand in the lines. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible mm. pain. I get back from Disneyland. I go to the ER. They told me it was just sciatica. And they gave me prednisone and a anti-inflammatory shot. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And no, it didn't go away. Um, they sent me, so December 12th, I got the first MRI. And they just said it was a mild bulging disc um, to go to physical therapy. I did physical therapy. And I also did chiropractor. It helped a little with the pain, but it never completely went away. And I called the pain management crying one day and I told him that I am in so much pain, I can't do it anymore. So they sent me up for the first epidural injection in March. I didn't feel that that helped at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, no, I don't think it helped. Um, I don't know what else to do. I'm walking, I'm doing my stretches, I'm going to chiropractor. I don't know what else to do. So they told me that I needed to get another MRI and I took that one in April. And they just told me it was mild worsening, that I had to continue doing physical therapy and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, well, I just, you know, I got kind of frustrated. So I continue with physical therapy, walking, stretches, all that they told me to do, I've been doing. Um, they told me to lose weight, I'm losing weight. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It, the pain is still there every day. <laughs> of course. Can I ask you some clarifying questions? Uh -huh. Who who told you that, uh, the disc was just a little bit worse in April. Who who told you that? The the spine specialist for from and, the second MRI. And that was a surgeon, or that was uh uh who was that a, a pain management doctor who, no, who was that? He's just he's just a back specialist. Oh okay yeah. okay. Because I have Kaiser, so I have to go I guess through their like protocols and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah um, yeah. Kaiser can be really good or it can uh -huh. be challenging and uh -huh. um, it it failed you miserably, quite frankly. Uh, they should, they need to look at this. And then, <laughs> well, um, we're going to go over it. We're going to go over it. Um, and then a couple I also, more. Sorry. I also took another, I had my second dose of epidural injection. Yeah. And I, I sent him an email. I waited a week and I sent him an email and I told him, I don't think it worked. And he yeah. told me, well, sometimes uh, the back specialist told me, oh, sometimes it takes three weeks for the epidural to actually kick in. Mm, that's not at all true either. Um, OK, well, interesting. I'm sorry you've had such a, a bad course. A few more questions. Mm -hmm. So your pinky toe, the one with the ingrown toenail, is it is it numb now? Is it really numb? No, it's not. Oh, good. I, sometimes yeah. sometimes yeah. I do. I do feel a little bit, but not all the time. Okay. So. And um, the pain, it's gone. It sounds like it's been horrific at some periods. What is it now? Is it bearable, unbearable? Where Where are you at? Okay, last week, for me, it was unbearable. I call my sister yeah. crying like every single day. Um, yeah. This week has been okay. Like, okay in a sense that I just pushed through, you know, with ibuprofen. Yeah, but you're literally eight months into this now. Yeah. 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 Almost almost nine months. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. You you want to look at the MRI? Yeah. Okay. That's, 
think I, I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm just so frustrated with Kaiser. But um, OK, let's take a look. This is your MRI, mm -hmm. and this is your back down by your hips and then up toward your head and down toward your bum. Mm -hmm. And if we went straight in at the L4, L5 level, we see a disc with a little bit of a bulge. Mm -hmm. And here, this you can see on this one above, the disc ends flush with the back of the bones. Yes. That's your L3, 4. But at your L4, 5, there's a little bit of a bulge right here. And you can see this nerve root coming by and getting a little bit displaced. And that when a disc touches a nerve root, it can cause irritation and inflammation. Mm -hmm. But then if we go down to your L5 S1 and look at that disc, it doesn't end at all flush with the back of the body of the bone. It is all the way out here and it is displacing that nerve root so much the nerve root is wrapped around it. That's what causes all the pain. Mm -hmm. So this is your source of pain. And this is not a trivial or a minor disc herniation at all. If we look at it in the perpendicular, in this image, we see a little bit of narrowing of the spinal canal. So it's a triangle instead of an oval, instead of an Easter egg. And we see a little bit of a bulging disc right there. But at the level below where the herniation is, this thing's taking up at least a third of the whole spinal canal mm -hmm. and parts of it are flowing out the foramen, the hole that the nerve root goes out of. And that's really painful because when that happens, it traps the nerve root in that bony canal. And there's a structure called the dorsal root ganglion, which is the source of that really severe burning extreme pain. Oh, yeah. And so you have a large herniated disc causing sciatica. Mm -hmm. And the nerve root that's affected is the one that determines the location. And the nerve root that goes to the pinky toe is the S1. And that's the one that is usually is usually most affected by the L5 S1 disc. So you have an L5 S1 disc herniation causing right S1 sciatica. Mm -hmm. And you have failed, as you already tried, epidural injection, as well as more than three months of conservative measures. So you are, uh, you're probably not a failure at very many aspects of your life, but you're a failure at conservative care. So sorry, uh, that didn't work for you. So that's where we really have to look at our options at this point and make up our minds about what's the next best treatment. Okay. You ready for that? Yeah. I think I'm ready. Yeah, I think you were ready six months ago, but let's <laughs> let's yeah. let's go let's go over and down. Mm -hmm. Better late than never, right? you through this because I think it's going to give you a little bit of perspective. Mm -hmm. This is um, a matrix that shows your options and you basically have three options. You can wait, mm -hmm. you can get an epidural injection, or you can have microdiscectomy surgery. Mm -hmm. And the way we determine what's the right option for you is based on two things. The green is your level of function. Are you normal or do you have a deficit? Now, you don't have significant numbness. Do you have weakness in your ankle? Uh, not really. No weakness. So you could walk up on your tippy toes. You could wear high heels. I can, but then okay. I'll be all in pain for the rest of the day. So I don't do it. Yeah, anything. you could do it, but it would be painful. Yeah. Okay, okay. So this axis, the functional axis is not a big one for you. Mm -mm. But the pain axis is... Your pain is not mild, it's unbearable. So normally we would say try epidural injection, but you did mm -hmm. and it didn't work. 
Mm -hmm. And so you're left with the only treatment which is known to shorten the time that gets this better and has a very low risk, and that's microdiscectomy. Okay. So your recommended treatment would be microdiscectomy surgery at this point. Okay. I, I figure by watching all your videos, I, I already kind of uh, had a feeling. How do you feel about the surgery? Is it scary to you? Is it, is it something you would want to try? Where, where, what's your thinking? Well, it is. I mean, obviously, every surgery is scary, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it was just like nerves. Like if but I then I saw your video that I won't be paralyzed of, for the no. surgery. And I hear all these people like, don't let them get into your back, because if they get into your back and then, then some it's going to be another issue and then another issue and and just like stories like that. And then you go and you Google and then you YouTube everything and then you get all like paranoid. <laughs> But well, yeah. um, it depends who they are, right? Don't yeah. let them get into your back. Don't let yeah. the wrong. Sur yeah, you got to find a very accomplished spine surgeon mm -hmm. who can do the operation safely and what they call minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that term before? Yeah, I've heard. Basically, yeah. what it means for you is in the old days, they would make a big incision, two or three mm -hmm. inches. They would uh, dissect the muscles off the bones pull them to the side, go down, drill off some bone, and take out the part of the disc that's protruding into your spinal canal. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have to do that anymore. What, mm -hmm. what they can do today is a minimally invasive surgeon can make an incision that's less than an inch, and they can go in and take it down and um, do the exact same operation, but just through a smaller than a one inch incision, and more importantly, without damaging and taking down all the muscles mm -hmm. and fascia along your back. So it's much less invasive, which means not only is it less painful and easier to recover from, but in the long term, you still have those muscles and you're still OK. Mm -hmm. I guess your issue is getting that done in Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah, because they told me that I, I needed to like. So I spoke to the surgeon in May, I believe. Like I had yeah. a telephone appointment. And yeah. he told me that I most likely he he made me feel that if I lose weight, my problem is gonna go away. Yeah, that's absolutely false. Your um your weight has nothing to do with your current situation in the sense that your problem is what we saw on the MRI. Yeah. And if you were to lose a hundred and fifty, what some insane amount of weight. Uh -huh. You'd still have that herniated disc and it would still be causing this exact same pain. So he was completely wrong about that. And um, the fact that he was so wrong makes me think he's not a good surgeon. Mm -hmm. Is there any other any other option for you? Um, well, I would have to, I guess, find another surgeon within Kaiser. I've, I, I have I've had my friend, her husband actually had a fusion like three mm. years ago through mm -hmm. Kaiser and a really good doctor. So I'm going to ask her for his information and I'll, I'm going to email him. And then 100%. Get, yeah. hundred percent. So what you want to do is get that doctor's name and go to the Kaiser website and look at the spine surgeons. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be neurosurgeons and some of them are going to be, um, some of them are going to be, um, uh, orthopedic surgeons who specialize in spine surgery mm -hmm. and you want to find one whose specialty is minimally invasive mm -hmm. and you can usually get that from the um, from the uh, website where they describe the surgeon okay. and then also in Kaiser the primary care doctors have a lot of power do you have a good relationship with your primary yeah I do I mean I would go back to your primary and say hey um, they mistreated me it's mm -hmm. been eight months. I should have been here at three months. Mm -hmm. I'm in wicked pain. This is ruining my life. I know I qualify for microdiscectomy surgery. I need you to fix this for me. Who's a minimally, inv I think the minimally invasive surgeon in Kaiser is this person. I want a microdiscectomy and I want it now. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. You don't have to be mean, but you have to be assertive okay. and um, let them know that you know what you want and that it's time to make good on your Kaiser insurance. There's a lot of phenomenal doctors in Kaiser, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just get caught up in the wheels. And uh, I mean, they 
they they haven't handled this right. Give them yeah. a chance to give them a chance to handle it correctly, and I think they will. Yeah, because I mean, I already I've con counted times, numerous times I've gone to the ER because I cannot handle the pain anymore, and all they do is just give they give me prednisone, prednisone. I already done like six seven rounds of prednisone, the two epidural injections, like I don't know what else to do. <laughs> And it's hard I can't to believe function. those those guys are telling you to lose weight and giving you an anabolic steroid, which causes people to gain massive amounts of weight. Mm -hmm. Morons. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not I'm that's like, just terrible. So yeah. I so I want to hear it from you. Let's do. A, can we do a role play? Yeah. OK, I'm going to be your primary care doctor. OK. And I feel sorry for you because I'm totally unqualified to be your primary care doctor. But <laughs> let's just pretend I'm your primary care doctor. Okay. You be you. Okay. I want you to tell me what you're going to tell that doctor. Give it to me. Give it to me, Alejandra. So I'm going to I'm going to tell her because she's a, a female and tell her that yeah. I can't do it anymore. I can't. Um, I, ha I, ha I just had my summer off because I work for for the school district. My work is it's you have to be on your feet a lot and it's it's torture. I suffered all last year at work. And I can't do it anymore. I just cannot. I have to like be on my game. I have two kids as well that I need to take care of. And I can't like right now, my mother-in-law, she's been helping me with my kids because I come home from work literally crying in pain every single day when I'm working. You know, I already tried the epidural, epidural injections. I already tried chiropractor. Um, they refer me with acupuncture. I do. I, I'm doing massage therapy. And nothing has helped. Like I get a little bit of pain free, like a couple hours a day, sometimes maybe. And I try to rush and do everything I can, but then I'm like out for like weeks with pain. So I don't know what else was what else to do. And I need to need you to find me a good surgeon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, two things I want you to say mm -hmm. by name. Mm -hmm. When you, I want you to do that exact speech to her. But I want you to add two components. OK, the first one is and you can put this in the beginning or the end. I have a very large herniated disc okay. and it has failed conservative care. Say it for me. I have a very large herniated disc which has failed conservative care. And then you're going to go through the uh -huh. things The okay. I've been to the ER this many times yes. i've been through six steroids they keep mm -hmm. telling me to lose weight which is not a treatment for a giant herniated disc you okay. guys have mishandled this for eight months and then you're going to end with i need a minimally invasive micro discectomy surgery okay. and i need you to arrange it for me okay okay ask her for what you want specifically you've done your homework you're mm -hmm. right Ask her for what you want. She needs to know, I need a minimally invasive microdiscectomy surgery, and I need you to arrange it for me. Okay. Period. Mm -hmm. um, yes. When uh, none of us want to be pushy and none of us want to be rude, mm -hmm. this is not pushy and this is not rude. This mm -hmm. is getting the care that you deserve and have paid for. You, mm -hmm. you are paying them. They work for you. Yeah. So you you need to be you don't need want to be aggressive, but you want to be assertive and mm -hmm. make sure she understands this is what I need and this is why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'm gonna do it. I can't. I'm like waiting and waiting, and I'm like, maybe one day I'm gonna There's no more waiting. And I'm not gonna have no more pain, but I'm just you I've know, had it like I'm mentally oddly tired. Enough, that's true, but that day might be in 2026. Mm -hmm. Your body is going to take care of this disc, but it's so big. It literally could take years. And by then, I mean, will you even have, I mean, if for, we need to get this done. So okay. yeah, yeah, okay. be assertive. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I feel so bad for you. How old are the kids? Uh, my daughter is 12 and my son is six. Those yeah. are good ages. Yeah. Yeah, they are. My daughter helps me a lot too, so Aww. they they help a lot. My mother in law, which she's great because she like helps, especially when I'm in so much pain. She's like, go rest, you know, because I'm always with my bag of ice, icing, heat pad, you know. Thank goodness like, for family, huh? What would we do? Yeah. I I always feel so. My heart goes out to people who don't have family to help them through these problems. 
Yes. I mean, it's really, it's really terrible. It could always be worse, but you need to get fixed. And like, honestly, I don't really know how it happened. It could have happened at work or it could have happened just anywhere, I guess. I don't know. I really don't, I don't know. know when it happened, but I know what happened. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I know what. Mm -hmm. The disc, the outer part tore mm -hmm. and it tore through wear and tear. I didn't show you, but on your MRI, the joint that's on that side where the herniation is, is swollen. Mm -hmm. So probably there's been extra wear and tear on that or an injury or goodness knows what. But at some point that annulus, the really strong outer part tore and then you could have twisted, you could have stepped off a step, you could have done anything. anything yeah. You could have sneezed and the soft part just boop, came right out. Yeah. And then the irritation started and that's when there was the back pain and the pinky toe numbness. That was the beginning of the inflammation on the nerve root. And now it's just your nerve roots had enough and it wants out. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you You're welcome kind of so prefer. much. Let me know what, let me know what happens. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I will have a good You're one. Welcome. You too. Bye. Bye now.